My name is Craig Fick. I've lived in East Hampton my whole life, Wayne Scott. Um, been for the town of East Hampton for 26 years working at the recycling center. I started off as a laborer, went to equipment operator and trailer driver, and now I'm in charge of the crew. I did not think that it would affect us the way it did. You hear the pandemic, you hear about people moving out, and then all of a sudden you see the amount of garbage coming into the facility and recyclables. Everybody's getting cardboard from Amazon because things got shipped in. The amount of material that came in, as far as recyclables, it was a great thing. Our, our numbers were way up. The year of 2020, we increased cardboard recycling by 250 tons. You know, the people were still doing their part as far as recycling goes, but the increase, it was all expected to be done on the same amount of guys. And, you know, we never increased our staff or anything. So it was, it was actually like, wow, here we go. You just did it. You just, you just do it. You know, everybody chips in as it is, and now everybody's doing a little extra. Oh, this needs, you know, there's a piece of garbage there. Everybody stops and picks it up now. It's not, you know, all oh, the laborers are going to get it. It's the truck driver, the equipment operators, everybody's going to do their part. And uh, the residents have also, you know, kept up with their diligence of recycling. You hear the rumors on the outside and, you know, oh, they don't recycle. And throughout the town, you hear that rumor and it's frustrating for somebody that works here. If you throw it in the trash, it does not get recycled. You know, if you separate your cardboard, you separate your mixed paper, we get paid for that material. So it's a benefit to the town of East Hampton to actually participate in recycling. Everybody's living in their home now, so, you know, oh, I wanted a new bathroom. <laughs> so I'm not gonna put it off anymore. I'm out here full time, so I wanna see the results of my new bathroom and quick, quicker than, you know, our construction debris, we had a lot of people doing remodels um, as far as us receiving. And, and the, the non-recyclable bowl, they, it's, you know, you have that full-time residency of, there's a second homeowner now is staying in their house year round. <clears throat> it, it's, hard, it's hard to say because it comes in in a black bag. So you really don't get a chance to see what's in their trash. So you know there's more bags, but you don't know what's in them. You, it, none of us are going through the trash. It's, you know, it's not something you actually look to do. But you realize how much more garbage the people are generating. And most likely from takeout. You know, because they're bringing all, all the all this food home, whether it's a pizza box or, you know, a, a food container. All that needs to uh, be processed. People are thirsty in East Hampton. <laughs> Very thirsty. Yeah, uh, yeah alcoholic uh, beverages, our glass containers went through the roof. It was... On my personal point of view, you, the liquor stores had to be doing well. <laughs> it, it concerned employees, sure. You know, it's like, oh, if, if I touch this and I pick it up now, am I going to catch the coronavirus? Am I, you know, I'm handling people's trash. Um, you know, so, so the best thing was, you know, do your best not to handle. You know, I asked the residents, hey, do you mind? actually you know pushing it in a little further our guys are here to keep the place tidy and fix mistakes not not fix people coming in and in a hurry and throw all their garbage in the mixed paper that just makes it hard for them um, to fix the mistakes that they're doing already we have two guys that work the recycling center sometimes one if somebody calls in sick um, so and everybody else is behind the scenes they're in the bailing room where, where we bail our cardboard um, and, and, and loading trash and picking it up from Montauk. And then we have guys running west to recycling uh, facilities up there. So, you know, a lot happens behind the scene also that uh, the residents don't really get a chance to see. We got to come to work and we got to get paid just like everybody else. But we, you know, handed out cleaning supplies to the booth attendant, to the um, 
scale house so they could wipe down the counters on shift changes and stuff like that. But it was, you know, business as usual and more business than usual. Uh, that actually worked out really well when we had every other spot coned off. There was less people that could actually get into the facility to use it at the same time. The one bad part about that was the cars coming in. We had lines out to Springs Fireplace Road on Sundays because we could only handle so many uh, residents at a time. So it, it definitely played a big part in um, handling the speed of which residents could get in and out. Um, but at the same time, it, it kept everybody safe. We've only had, I believe, two cases um, at the facility, and that was this year. It wasn't even the, the first year during the height of it. So, um, and, and luckily they, they got better, and you know nobody else in their household got it, and that was a good thing. Uh, they were all very, very careful, and you know, my thanks to the employees, because they did their part as far as, you know, and they handle, you know, up here is very busy on a Saturday and Sunday. Um, a lot of residents coming through and you, you sit there and you go for the amount of people that these guys see. Um, yeah, my, my, my applaud to them. Scary, scary. Um, it's hard to believe that a virus could take us out of commission as quick as some of something like this has done. Um, the deaths, the you know, worrying about your family members, hearing stories about people that still can't breathe months after having the virus. Um, so that that would be scary. Would be my word. Mm -hmm.